Hey guys, uh, welcome back. So if you got this email from the Department of Labor, specifically New York State, um, I live in New York, um, you may have to pay your money back. So a couple months ago, actually back in uh, February, uh, I got this email from the Department of Labor and basically they want documentation that you were a legit business uh, back when you applied for unemployment or PUA for the freelance sole proprietors. So uh, they want documentation. This might have scared you, um, especially if you don't have a legitimate business. I know a lot of people actually applied under sketchy circumstances, but if you have a legitimate business, if you had a legitimate business back uh, when you applied, you should be okay. You're, you should be fine. And again, this is not official advice. I don't work for the SBA and I don't work for the New York Department of Labor. So basically, uh, I'm just going to talk about my own specific situation and none of this is official advice. And yes, there are fake accounts on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Um, check out my last video talking about scammers faking like they're me. I will never ask you for money and I won't officially help you out with your application. This is just for informational purposes. So let's get to the email. It says, Dear New Yorker, our records show that you received a PUA or unemployment for the freelancers. They want documentations to show that you, here, let me make the mouse bigger. They want documentation sh to show that you are eligible. You must prove that you are part of the workforce by providing proof of employment, self-employment, or that you are planning to begin employment or self-employment. So to provide documentations, you're going to click on this link. But before you do that, always verify that the email is legit. Um, and it's from New York State Department of Labor at info.labor.ny.gov. And make sure it's it just says that cleanly. So here also the reply to is uh, the same email address as well. So sometimes, you know, they'll they'll put this name, but the email would, will look different. Okay, um, so this is an official email that I got, but if you're unsure and you want to double check to make sure these links are correct, um, just go to your browser and type in this. Don't click on these links if you're unsure. PUA.labor.ny.gov and that will take you to this site right here and you're going to have to, I think you have to log in before. I might be already logged in, um, but it takes you to this uh, section here. They have English and Spanish. Um, so if you want to, you can freeze frame this. Uh, this will be in Spanish. Okay, um, so back to English. You Oh, so when you get the email, you have to respond within 90 days. So that's three months for me. I got this email uh, February 22nd and I have to respond by May 24th. Uh, so basically 90 days. You are required to provide this documentation even if you believe you have already previously submitted such documentation. Yeah, it's kind of like going to the dentist. If you go to a new dentist, you're going to have to take new x-rays. So even if you've already done this before, you're just going to have to submit more proof again. Looks like there's four sections. People who were employed and lost their job due to the pandemic. So this is when you're working for somebody, you have a W-2. And then this section is for pending employment to start working, but couldn't due to the pandemic. So if you apply for a job and you were about to, you know, everything was good to go. And because everything kind of shut down, then um, you're going to have to submit like the offer letter, any statements or other documents, other documents for Peace Corps, AmeriCorps, educational, uh, religious organizations, documentation provided by these organizations. Please note, this documentation must include the names, the organization's name, address, and phone number, and must also indicate your employment relationship to such an organization. So this has to be like an official, like you've been accepted, you're on your way to uh, working, um, not like you're going for interviews. They were on track to hire you. So this is if you already had, you were already established as a self-employed, and then this is if you were going to, but you couldn't. This one, this one can be a little bit tricky because uh, how do you prove that you were gonna be self-employed but you didn't actually start your business officially yet um, so there's ways to prove it like you already applied for a business license uh, state or federal EIN perhaps like an LLC filing written business plans lease agreements other documents 
So lease agreements, I guess if you uh, were about to rent a office space somewhere, um, you probably have these lease agreement documents. And then written business plans, I guess, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people start their own freelance business without writing a business plan. I personally never officially wrote one. Um, I just kind of, you know, went into freelancing as a photographer. If you don't have one, but you kind of knew what your plan was at the time, then I, I guess if you, you just got to have a business plan, that may suffice. It may not. And so if you don't know how to write a business plan, uh, just you found me on YouTube. So go ahead and keep searching, keep digging, and you'll find other videos on how to write business plans. Okay. So back to self-employed, but couldn't continue uh, due to the pandemic. So this is the section that applies to me. I was a working photographer, videographer at the time. So you can submit your tax returns, your Schedule SE or your Schedule C from your 1040. And it must be from the year before you applied for benefits. So I applied uh, originally well, March 2020 when uh, lockdown happened. So this would be me. Here it says you're not required to upload your entire tax return, just the Schedule C. And if you, I guess if you don't have a Schedule C, which you should have a Schedule C if you're self-employed, even if you don't make a lot of revenue, but you should still have filed uh, Schedule C. Um, but if you don't have that other sub other forms, I guess, yeah, I mean, they, they might catch up to you if, if you don't submit a Schedule C. But so 1099s, um, this, if you work freelance jobs for, you know, organizations or companies or people, and they send you a 1099 for if you work for them, they give you money and then they're supposed to send you 1099s, um, especially if it's over $650, then you should receive 1099s that you're supposed to then use as revenue to file your taxes, which goes on your Schedule C. So it kind of goes hand in hand if you receive 1099s and Schedule Cs uh, and you file Schedule Cs. If you have 1099s from uh, the year before, so for me, it'd be 2019 1099s revenue that I earned in 2019. I could submit that as well. If you have any EIN uh, numbers registered for your business, you can submit that information, uh, business license, business receipts, signed affidavits. So the affidavit uh, must include the name and contact information of the persons verifying your pending self-employment. So this is interesting. I wonder what, like, are they just going to accept anybody's signed affidavits? I don't know how they're going to who qualifies um, that could sign this? I don't know. That's it's a little vague. So uh, if you go ahead and click these, you can kind of see the options that you uh, that you have to upload. You know, Schedule SC, Schedule C, 1099s, all that stuff. And please don't click submit uh, until you've uploaded all your documents. So go ahead and attach everything that you're going to submit first before you click this button. Okay, so I just submitted mine. Um, and it's a little confusing. This is screenshots that I just took. I uploaded my Schedule C and just a 1099 um, miscellaneous that I received. And so I attached those. I clicked this, uh, submit documentation. This pop-up comes up, which says a required attestation. It says, we will scan your uploaded files using a virus scanner tool. This happens just after you agree to the attestation, which is here. Once you click this, it's going to scan your documents for viruses. This can take up to a few minutes to complete. If a document is flagged as rejected, please upload another copy of the document. So I clicked agree and it just brought me back to this page again. I don't know. It's a little confusing because there's no like confirmation that everything is good to go. So I click this section again and it, it's like it just resets the form. So did that work? I hope. I hope it works. I mean, can I submit these again? Let's try it again. <laughs> I'm going to blur these out. Okay, so I've attached my Schedule C and a 1099 miss that I had. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do this again. This is the second time I'm doing this. Submit documentation. Oh, let me... There you go. Bigger mouse. Okay, ready? So I click that. Here's the pop-up again. Make it bigger. I don't think it was flagged as rejected last time. Okay, so click agree. Oh, so okay, so this is new. This did not happen before. And so there's a screenshot. All right, so it looks like 
This uh, is good to go. Below is a history of all the uploaded documents, including anything that has been rejected. If a document is rejected, you can click return to this uh, submission homepage, re-upload. The rejected document will appear in your document history even after it has been uh, re-uploaded. Okay, so I guess if you don't get this screen, then go back and do it again. So you can go back to the submission page if you need to do more and then click log out when you're done. All right, that's good. Yeah, that was a little glitch. That makes me feel better. Uh, good confirmation. All right. But if you go back to the email, uh, you can see that if the email will tell you when you need to upload by. And be, but before we get to that, um, there's like a FAQ there, but it says claimants who receive a week or more unemployment benefits on or after December 27th, 2020 must send in documentation. So here, if you fail to provide your documentation before uh, the due date that you have, uh, you will be issued an appealable determination. So you can appeal, um, but if you're deemed ineligible, you will have to pay everything back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I can't find the comment right now, but somebody called the Department of Labor. They asked them, you know, if you can't provide documentation, is this basically a loan? And they said something like, you can call it that if you want. I don't know, is that an uh, interest-free loan perhaps? Who knows if they're going to charge interest on it, but so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go to this link right here. I guess they called it the Continued Assistance Act, CAA, that was signed into law on December 27th, 2020. And so anybody who received PUA benefits on or after December 27th, you have to provide documentation. Okay, so let's go to the frequently asked questions. Uh, when must I provide my proof of employment, self-employment, or proof of planned beginning of employment or self-employment? And it's basically 90 days from when you get notified. So I got an email. I don't think I got a, a snail mail letter, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this all shows up way past the 90-day mark. But I did get an email, so uh, check your junk boxes. It's quite important. Um, you don't want to miss this or else you're just going to have to pay back uh, all the money. All of the money. Why must I provide documentation at this time? Again, Continued Assistance Act requires it. If you don't pay it back, you'll be forced to pay it back. The entire period of your claim. So yeah, that's quite a bit of money, especially if you spent all that uh, money. Also, you will be, if you were overpaid, you're gonna have to pay back any overpayment. I just got a letter today saying I was overpaid, $14.20, so. I'm gonna have to pay that back. I don't know how they calculated that, but how will the DOL notify me? Um, again, they'll email you coming from this official email, nysdol at info.labor.ny.gov. And they may also send you a snail mail. Okay, how do I provide the necessary documentation to the DOL? And we just covered that on the site, all those options to upload your documents. What types of documents will they accept as proof uh, to substantiate? You must submit at least one form of documents from the sections below that best apply to you. That's not comprehensive. So if you have other records that will show that you were employed or self-employed or on your way to it that they don't list here, and that's all you have, then go ahead and submit those and hope for the best. But yeah, W-2, paycheck stub, earnings and leave statement. If you have an EIN, if you were going to work for the Peace Corps or AmeriCorps or educational religious organizations, you're going to have some of these documents or other proof of uh, potential employment or whatever. And again, signed affidavits from persons verifying your attachment to such organization. Okay, so it looks like, you know, um, signed affidavits from the organization themselves, official people from the companies or organizations that you were going to work for. Can't just be anyone random um, like a friend or whatever. Pending employment, if you were offered employment, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the offer letter if you were going to work, but you didn't start yet and couldn't, and other signed affidavits. Uh, if you're self-employed, you know, your Schedule SE or Schedule C from your tax return from 2019, from the year prior to when you applied. So I applied in 2020 for the benefits, and I have to submit my 2019 tax information. Uh, also, copies of 1099s from 2019 as well. And let's see, EIN numbers, business license, receipts, signed affidavits, 
from persons verifying your self-employment. So this uh, gets a little tricky because like, you know, if you're going to work for an organization, there are official people that can sign affidavits for you uh, verifying. But like as a self-employed, I mean, who's going to sign this? That's that's kind of up in the air, it seems. I don't know. Maybe they have specific people that they'll accept. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess also if you have invoices and maybe canceled checks or proof of that you received revenue from companies that you work for as a freelancer, I'm sure that um, should work as uh, business receipts. And pending self-employment. This looks like kind of where a lot of people um, may have just applied because they thought it was free money. So there was a lot of scamming going on, a lot of fake applications. But again, if you're legit, then you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Yeah, I can imagine if you were if you were going to come up with a fake pending self-employment, then you're going to write a fake business plan. But, you know, stuff like that, if you try to game the system, it's eventually going to catch up to you. Which makes me wonder, like, if, if you do have to end up paying all this money back, I wonder how they're going to have like a payment plan because I'm I'm sure not everyone just saved up their entire unemployment in a bank account and didn't spend it. So I'm sure there's going to be some kind of payment plan. Okay, what happens if I don't provide documentation? Um, basically, you're going to have to pay it back and you'll be de determined overpaid for any be benefits paid to you on or after December 27th. Oh, so I guess, you know, they they won't go after your money, your benefits from before December 27th, so March to December, um, but anything after that is looks like it's liable to be repaid. Okay, so I provided my documents. Uh, what happens while they're being reviewed? So if you click submit, nothing further is required of you unless you are contacted by the DOL. You are issued an appealable determination letter. So if you're legit and they see all the documentation that you provided and they they everything is good, then I guess that's that. But it looks like you will definitely be contacted again if they have any other questions or if they determine that you're not eligible and you can appeal that as well. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Don't forget to check your junk mailboxes to see if you got this email or not. I applied right away from when they opened up the PUA benefits uh, to freelancers. And so I think that was March of 2020. And I got my email uh, notifying me February 22nd. So if you applied right away and you haven't seen this email yet, go ahead and check your junk mail because you can't ignore this, uh, whichever side of the fence you're on with your eligibility. So I hope this helps. Uh, this is just for informational purposes only. Again, can't wait till the weather gets warmer again. Um, yeah. Anyway, till next time. See ya.